Okay, Momo, I'm going to put a piece of cheese and a, the sausage on top of the ropa. No, you can't get it yet. It's going to deliver to you because now it will deliver to you, okay? Just chew. Okay, good girl. Got one of my favorite things to review today, a new robot. Well, it's more of a robotic platform, but we'll get into that in a minute. This is the Diablo, a self-balancing robot from Direct Drive Tab, a local Shenzhen startup. It's a self-balancing robot. I'm sure you're all familiar with that class of device, the Segway, hoverboards, and all that. The Diablo has two wheels on the end of articulated legs and like nearly all robots on the market these days builds on the refined earlier designs no one is ripping each other off for this class of device iteration is the best path to innovation and overly broad patterns kill innovation some similar robots include the boston dynamics handle the sk80 skater the Sento Pro, the Tencent Oli. Innovation in robotics is divided into two broad categories, brains and brawn. Programmers work with computer vision, a huge variety of sensors and machine learning to make smart robots that can perform tasks with as much autonomy as possible in the real world. Other engineers work on brawn, mechanical bodies, the devices with arms, legs, tentacles, wheels, and tracks those robot brains need to actually get things done in the real world. The Diablo is brawn with a mostly empty brain. It has a Raspberry Pi single board computer with just enough brains to do exactly what you tell it to do with this little remote control and not fall over. Its purpose is to give people who want to work on robot brains a body they can use right out of the box without building something custom. You might think that's just like an RC car. Kind of, but not so much. Because it has a big old brain just waiting to be filled and all the power on board to run it. So it's not quite a full-fledged robot yet because its big brain is mostly empty and you have to know a bit about programming robots to feel it. But it's a lot more than a remote control toy because all that hardware is right there just ready to go and receive your code. What I'm going to do today is evaluate the Diablo as a mobile platform. How well does it physically navigate the world and how easy is it for a programmer who may only have basic fabrication skills to build on it, attach sensors to it and all that. Okay, so I just ripped this part up at Tinkercad. Super easy to use Tinkercad. I use it for almost everything because it's just really quick and these are going to pop right on the basket. This is Flash Print, it's the slicer for FreshForge printers. I've been using the FlashForge Creator Free Pro for almost everything these days. It's just very reliable. It gets the parts done, there is no muss, there is no fuss. You know, there is a lot of work printers on the market. I just happen to like this particular FlashForge because I don't always want to play with the printer. Sometimes I just want it to print. So this is a good printer and I do recommend it and you will see me using it in different videos. Parts are Polymax PLA from Polymaker. You know, I've got kind of standard stuff to use now. And Polymaker is my filament brand and I do really like their filament. They are cheaper filaments, they are more expensive filaments, they've got just the right value for me. The parts are strong, I don't get a lot of fail prints, I don't get a lot of jam. So if you are looking for a filament brand that you know fairly reliable and you can just put in there and not have to worry about, I do recommend Polymaker and they have a number of filaments that I use. 
Okay, these are heat set inserts. It's sort of like a soldering iron and it just presses that heat set insert directly into the plastic and it's very, very strong. And it's a great way to make all sorts of functional devices and parts for around the house. I use this a lot. With a 3D printer and a heat set insert, you just have this gigantic ecosystem of very useful things that you can make. This camera transmitter is actually designed for drones and drones fly in our air cool so it gets very hot so what I have to do is add a heat sink to it and a fan just to keep it cool while the Diablo dries around in the sun and that's what that big chunk of metal on there is Right, pros and cons. Cons. Despite its long legs, it can't go upstairs or curbs. I think that it could be programmed to sense and perfectly time a hop up on the low curb, but I couldn't get it to do it manually. 
So it uses curb cuts, those ramps in the sidewalk, and other ramps to navigate urban environments. This is a big, big issue for robots that operate in public because you know who those things are intended for? People in wheelchairs who already have to deal with all sorts of issues with things blocking their path without a whole new class of problems from robot startups who want to save on hardware costs by clogging up infrastructure that wheelchair users need. Next, it does not come with any sensors that would keep it from hurting a pet or a small child. When I introduce Momo to it, I wrap it in pool noodles just to be safe. And she's very sturdy, with a thick protective coat and okay with rock play, but a smaller dog or child could easily get knocked over as is out of the box. So please be very careful. But understand that the Elbro is a development platform, not a home appliance or consumer electronics product. The whole purpose of its existence is so people can work on solving problems exactly like those. So keep in mind, the Elbow is a platform for solving problems in robotics and automation. It's not a solution to those problems on its own. If you are a developer, two great places to start is making sure your robot can hurt anyone or any pet and making sure it does not co-opt or block the infrastructure that people in wheelchairs need. It's not fair to ask them to share what they need with you when it's barely usable as is and your robot company is probably not maintaining or improving the wheelchair infrastructure you want to take advantage of for profit. Okay, pros! The cost right now of around $2,000 is quite good for what you get. The, the, the elbow is very sturdy. When it, when it does get banged up, say in a hot crash, it's very easy to fix. Why not an RC car, you asked? This is a lot easier to add things onto and the nature of the design means that the entire robot can pan and tilt, saving you the problem of adding extra servos to do that. It also has a massive 20A volt, 6M hour onboard battery that has a breakout to supply whatever sensors, electronics, cameras you want to run. It will power the, the elbow for about four hours depending what you are having it do. Final verdict. The D elbow is not a toy. It's not a consumer electronics platform. If you'd like to learn about robotics, are an educator or developer, the D elbow offers a great value and works out of the box. If you aren't going to take advantage of the onboard Raspberry Pi or add sensors, it's basically a pricey RC car, which maybe is something you want, I can't say, but as a development platform, I think it's great and I will be featuring it in future videos. The link is in the description box. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this review. Sorry, I haven't been doing as many videos. It's pretty frustrating when you two just hides them from search results after weeks of work or demonetizes them, so I made nothing at all for that work. Still, I'll keep putting videos out, but maybe not as often. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.